Thank you for staying with us on Plus Politics. And now we get into the nitty gritty of the discussion this evening. Najib Bello and Chopin joining us, and we'll go into in-depth analysis and review of this issue. Now let's let's talk about the NLC and the government controversy. And I want to start off by asking: Did the government really intend to increase minimum wage, or would you say this was just a political move, charade? In your own opinion, Najib, let's start with you. Well, it's something they have to review every once in a while, so right. um, it's, it, it wasn't really a charade. But right. then um, I think the process of deciding, the process of finally deciding the figure is what was uh, controversial yes. because uh, it took months of negotiation. Negotiation started uh, about 2018 and up to the end of 2018, we thought the minimum wage that was uh, put forward by labor was going to be approved but that went into the new year and all sorts so um the governors coming in to say oh they can't afford that is what is causing the whole delay up till this point in time but then i think the figure is quite is quite decent it's not even it's not something that they would jump with joy for but i think it's something that would just help them get by in this economy. Sheikh, do you subscribe to Najib's um, contemplation of this? Yeah, I mean... Um, Political move, or did they really intend to pay this minimum wage? They, they don't have a choice. <laughs> um, you know, because the realities of the times are clear, and it's obvious to everybody. Um, whether you want to talk from inflation, the economy has deteriorated significantly over the last um, 10 years. Yeah. Um, the current minimum wage, or uh, well, the previously current minimum wage of 18,000 was approved almost like 10 years ago, mm -hmm. right? And there is a provision in the law that actually prescribes a five year review. So, you know, this was long overdue. Um, but I think it's important to also note that the the bone of contention now between labor and the governors is not so much the minimum wage itself of 30,000 yes. naira that, uh, that has been agreed across board, including the governors. It's the consequential adjustments. Um, and this is where the governors are playing games in trying to reduce the overall wage bill. You know, bearing in mind that, okay, so if you, if you increase um, the lowest um, levels of the rung civil of the service, ladder, yes. the, the lowest rung of the ladder, which yeah. is level seven, right to 30,000 by it's meant to reflect through you to, have to increase yeah. all of the others as well yes. but by what percentages so it's those percentage increases that has become a bone of contention and the government the governments across the country are trying to reduce those percentages as much as possible in order to reduce the overall wage bill and labor is obviously trying to push for as high a percentage increase as possible across board. Yes. So, so this, I, I don't see going away too soon because, you know, each state has its own um, peculiarities. peculiarities when it comes to their revenue, the, the situation with their revenues and all that. Yes. Right. So that is what will eventually determine what is agreed with regards to the consequential adjustment. So it will have to happen across the states. Across board. Now, yeah. which is why many people would doubt the fact that the government never really intended to increase this minimum wage because it doesn't cost across to the top um, of, the, of, of, the, of the rung and the ladder. Why would you say this is so, Najib? Well, definitely, like he said, it's a review, it's a review that comes with time about every five years. So whether you intend to or you don't intend to, it is the law that you have to do it. So it seems what may have happened is that the government had not made preparations enough or because of the downturn of the economy about 2014 to 2000. So that changed a lot of the dynamics that, that is reflecting today. But I think with what the government is putting in place, they have to, revenues, they claim, the government claims that revenues are increasing. Yeah. So if revenues are increasing, they should be able to pay these new fees. And of course, they are taxing us more from every angle. So I don't see, and the governors themselves, they have to go beyond this thing of collecting money from Abuja and paying um, salaries. We hear in Oyo states that IGR has improved almost um, 300 or 400 okay. percent in a couple of months. So the governors have to really work harder. They have to cut their own expenses, all the monies they spend on frivolities. They have to, they have to reduce costs and increase revenues to be able to pay these salaries because these salaries are really not 
extravagant salaries. Okay. They are very. They just cater to the very basic minimum. So they have to make. They, they have to make these monies available. I think difficulties in generating revenues over the last couple of years may have stood in the way, but it's something they have to do. They must do it. All right, what brings me to a very critical question. When, Shekun, when do you think um, the, the members of the NLC should start being paid this minimum wage? From what date? Um, I mean, it, it, that's absolutely subject to the agreement between the state chapters of the NLC okay. and the state governors. So it, it's, it's not going to be one date across the country. Across board? Yeah, it's, it's going to happen as you negotiate. For instance, I mean, I know that Lagos has already committed to paying. I think Cardinal has already started. Cardinal has already started paying. Um, and a couple of other states have agreed. But for the others, you know, the, 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 the battle goes on. So this battle between the Katsina state government and the NLC in Katsina state, um, one can only hope will not be allowed to, gen to degenerate into an actual strike action. You know, I, I, hope, I hope they, 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 they resolve it. But like Najib said, and I think this is an important point to, 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 to make, there is really no reason. Yes, we understand that there are revenue peculiarities across the country, but for me, there is no reason why any state should say they can't pay both the minimum wage and the consequential adjustments. There is no reason. Um, whether by virtue of increasing your revenues or by virtue of reducing your expenses, for example, there's something, this weird thing they call the security vote, mm. that the governors are not, they, they're not required to give account. And from the, the confessions, in quotes, of some of their colleagues, some of them go home with as much as 500, uh, 500 billion, sorry, 500 million yeah. naira per month called security votes that they don't account for. If you take you know, some of this money, some of the, ex, uh, you know, you have a governor who's got 1,000 aides. I think that was Benue State at a point, or was it Bauchi, that had 1,000 special advisors, 1,000. You know, so I think, you know, a lot of these governors need to take a deep look into their souls and decide what they're there to do. Are they there to serve the people and improve their lives? Or are they there to serve their own interests and feather their own nests? Uh, without the civil service, you can't serve the people. You need to make sure that your civil service is happy, efficient, and productive. Otherwise, you can't serve the people. So, you know, it, it's a no-brainer. I don't know why this is taking so right. long. Najib, would you, would you agree with what Shagun said? And do you think there should um, be a date that should be for, in unison for all to be able to pay this minimum for wage? For me, I've, 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 I've looked at the date that um, the new minimum wage was signed into law. Oh. It was signed about April 18th, you know, and since it had become law since then, it should be paid from that very date. Okay. Now, across as, board, yes, okay, it was Weekend signed as a law. Yeah. It became a law. So, if there are negotiations and the NLC decides to negotiate based on the new terms and say, okay, you can pay us from December 31st, or you can pay us from January. That is based on the new negotiations, and they will agree if they decide to agree to that. But then in terms of following the law, the day that thing became a law, the day it was signed by the president after being passed by the National Assembly is the day it should. So it depends on what they negotiate at the, at the end of the day. But let's, let's look at this um, more critically. How can all the states, that is states, be able to pay this minimum wage? Given that we have more states who generate more internal revenue than others. And I'm yes. going to come to that question and mm -hmm. all, but how do we expect the states to be able to pay this minimum wage? How can all the states be able to pay the minimum wage? Shaggy, you want, you want to go first? Well, um, uh, you know, this is a conversation that has been on for a long time. Okay. Uh, and it's one of the reasons that a lot of people talk about restructuring, you know, of the overall architecture of the country. Whether you talk of the political structure, the economic structure, you know, even geopolitical alignments and all that, you know, that's why some people talk about this. Because what we expect from governors um, as the federating units of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, remember we run a federation. Yeah. Uh, um, these states are supposed to be independent units. The governors are the chief executive officers of those states. You're like a CEO of a, of a corporation, right? So um, 
it's up to them to look inwards. Every single state in this country has got something that they, 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 that, that they can term as being their own area of comparative advantage. You know, so whether you want to talk about um, a Lagos state that is home to um, our ports, for example, um, that is home to the corporate, corporate Nigeria, for example, or you want to talk about maybe a state like Calabar who has made tourism you know, something of, 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 of an advantage to them, or, you know, maybe, you know, the Middle Belt countries, I'm sorry, states where you've got agriculture, you know, or mineral resources in Oshun states, in places like Zamfara. Every state in this country has got something that they can boast of. What one finds so weird and baff baffling is why this government, successive government, by the way, have failed to harness these resources to generate enough revenue, not only to cover the expenses comfortably, but to actually contribute to the mm. federal purse. You know, so instead it's the reverse. They, 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 you know, everybody is depending on oil and then at the end of each month you go with your bag and you go to Abuja to have a sharing meeting. You know, instead of having this federal sharing thing, we should be having a federal contribution. contribution. Or, <laughs> you know, let's, let's bake a cake instead of sharing cakes. So, Najib, in your own view, how do you think all states can actually pay this minimum wage? We said cut um, expenses, increase revenues, and um, he has mentioned ways that they can increase revenues. Now, first, let's, let's understand that the minimum wage is not something that is so strict that everybody must pay 30000 now. Mm. If but Lagos, it is the minimum wage. It so is it the minimum wage. It can be above it. Exactly. It cannot be below so, it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So Lagos can pay 50000 yeah. or 70000 Kaduna can decide to pay um, 35000 But what they are saying is every state can even decide to pay above the minimum wage. You know, what the minimum wage is saying is you can't go below this. So we are not saying every state you are tied to 30000 or say the next level, maybe 50000 No. It's saying... Don't go below this. So that is what it is. But in terms of if our state government, remember that this 30,000 naira we are talking about, it's not, it's not big money. It is money that even students spend during weekends. So it is not big money. Mm -hmm. So if you cannot pay, you shouldn't even be a governor if you can't pay people that 30,000 naira per month. That's less than, uh, Benny, that's less than $100 mm -hmm. for a month's worth of work. So I, I don't see any other way we can say that, or oh, what if this state is different? Was, I believe every state can pay 30000 naira minimum wage and um, the rest consequential payments. But then it depends on how the governor manages the resources of the state. All right, now talking about states, let's, let's look at how realistic this is. If we compare states like Lagos State <laughs> and Zamfara. Yes. In comparison to those two states, would you still say it is realistic for um, states like that to be able to pay this minimum wage in look, comparison to Lagos? Wait, you have to look at this again. Yes. What we are saying is that Lagos can pay more. Lagos can pay more. Zamfara may not be able to pay as much as Lagos but Zamfara can pay the, at least the minimum wage. That is why it is set to the minimum. So that 30,000 naira and the other ratings are for states like maybe Zamfara, states like maybe Jigawa or where, you, Kebi or the rest. Now, if you decide there's nothing that will stop, NLC will not fight you if you want to pay 35, 40,000. Go, uh, federal government will not stop you if you want to pay 50, 70,000. It is just the minimum. So I think what this, the NLC should even be negotiating for across the states, especially states like Kano or um, in the FCT or some other places, is for them to say, okay, can you give us 35, 40,000? Then states like um, NLC and states like Zamfara, Kebi, and the rest may be saying, okay, we can accept 30,000, but as time goes on, let's see how we can move to 32,000 or something like that. But in terms of the very basic minimum being 30,000, yes. every state in Nigeria must pay. Shego, in comparison, I just drew two states now, Zamfara, Lagos State. Will it still be fair for us to expect how realistic these other states should be able to pay this amount? Again, I mean, we say again, they don't have a choice. 
<laughs> when you say they don't have they a don't choice, have a choice. Is it, it is I mean, the, law. the law. Okay. <laughs> the law. Based on the law. law. But yeah. what if this state will come out and tell you, you know what, we don't, we don't generate enough to be able to afford this minimum wage. They, yes, they, the they, law has said so, yeah. but we're not generating enough to be able well, to pay this minimum wage. It's a very simple thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's either you pay or you face the consequence. I mean, there, there's, yeah, so. And there are consequences. And there are consequences. It's the law. So if you break the law, um, what I would expect labor, for instance, to do is to agitate. You know, the, the political players themselves would not necessarily hold themselves accountable. So it's for labor to then enforce these things. It's the law. So if they're not paying, for instance, you go to court. There are several options that is available to you. You go to court to enforce that law yeah. and ensure that there is a consequence for their failure to implement. So they don't have a choice. Um, as to whether, you know, Lagos State or Zamfara, it's fair to expect them, you know, and all of that. Look, we've said it and we're going to keep saying it, that there is no state in Nigeria that should not be able to afford 30,000 naira minimum wage. It's the minimum. There is none that shouldn't be able to afford it if, at the very minimum, so fine, let's assume that you can't increase your revenue base. You can cut your costs. You can't, you know, be saying to your employees that, uh, sorry, we can't afford to pay this amount, and yet you are going to town, you know, with uh, luxuries and, and um, ostentatious, um, you know, expenses. You, you can't do that. So at the very minimum, they cut their costs so that they can pay. You know, so I, I don't think it's a matter that I don't even think we should make the conversation yes. about whether they can, or they can mm. or they can't. Okay, we should be talking about how <laughs> they can pay. Let, let, let's wrap this up on this note. May, many people have argued the fact that the government and NLC didn't thoroughly think this through. And, and do you think they're caught in a vice in which there is no escape at this point and this could end up in a deadlock? Oh, the deliberations for this have gone on for almost two years, mm -hmm. almost. So I don't, I, I don't see how we can say they didn't think about or they didn't deliberate on it properly. It's they, they, they were, there were all sorts of factors that were considered when the negotiations were going on. So we can't even, and now that it has been passed into law, we can't come and say we want to revoke the law or we want to, I, it's not something we can do at this point. It's been passed into law and the law must be obeyed. So it must be paid. <laughs> the minimum, the new minimum wage must be paid. We will take a break and when we return, we will talk about the events that shaped the country's politics in 2019. Stay with us.